Welcome to the Talking Smash podcast. I'm Matt Hetherington. I'm here with six-time US national champion Lily Jung. Back for another interesting episode um, of the podcast. And we're going to be delving into serve receive. Um, <laughs> that face, just like, why me? Um, serve receive for me is like uh, kind of a, I wouldn't say like overlooked, but it's an interesting topic because people always talk about serve. People always say, oh, you know, service is the most important part of the game and like you have the most control when you're serving. Um, I don't know how you feel about it, but when I talk about serve and receive, I find receive to be a lot more important than serve um, because you don't have that control and you have somebody else who's trying to impose like a strategy in their mind that they've created from mm -hmm. their serve. Um, so I always... A lot of the time when I talk about serve receive, I always find that serve receive is almost more important than serve. Um, if you think about the top level, um, just in general, how, how do you find matches generally go when somebody clearly has like a weakness in their serve receive? Um, I mean, obviously quickly, quickly. it makes things <laughs> difficult. <laughs> uh, I agree. It's, it's, I think, one of, if not the most crucial parts of a match or a game, mm -hmm. just because, yes, you're right, like it is so important to have a good serve and to feel comfortable, but also I think when you struggle and serve receive, then when it comes to you, you have like way more pressure on your serve to, on your serve to yeah. like win two points, you know? And if you aren't able to do that, then you have a clear disadvantage. So I completely agree with you that serve receive is maybe a little bit under underlooked. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you've talked about, um, especially like recently, you've done some more blogs about more specifics of your matches, and one of them was against Mima Ito. And mm. that one, you had Hina Hayata and Mima Ito, but in the Mima Ito one, you talked a lot more about um, serve-receive and the difficulty you had getting into the match. Um, just because her serve was so difficult to to read. Um, would you consider serve receive to be like a difficult skill to develop? Because, I mean, serve is like, serve, serve is like technically not that linear. Like when people serve, there's a lot more like unorthodox stuff going on. There's very, very different service actions. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more creativity and, and deception. You know, if you're dealing with somebody forehand looping, for the most part, you know what's going on, right? The, yeah. the stroke's pretty similar among all players. Whereas when it comes to receiving serve, you have such a huge range of different players with strange service actions or, you know, different contacts or different follow-throughs. Um, do you think that makes it really hard to practice service receive well? Um, I mean, how would you approach, like... Um, well, I think okay. what you mentioned, Mimi Ito is a great example of that. Someone who has like a huge variety of serves mm. and spins and everything. And when I played against her, it was very much like from the beginning, obviously very difficult to read. But then once I started to get used to it, she could pull out another something completely else. different yeah. one and something I haven't seen. And it's just like if something like she can pull out anything from her pocket, basically. And I think... Like, it is really difficult, but there are also different ways to approach that. So instead of trying to overcomplicate it, what helps me, at least during the match, is that, like, I tend to rush. So, mm. like, if I can't see the spin, I try to, like, rush really fast, take the ball off the bounce. But what our national team coach, Galdrin, has been trying to tell me is to, like, just have some more patience, wait for the ball, look at the bounce. It doesn't mm. matter like what they're doing. They could like maybe to us her like crazy like yeah, yeah. movements. We call it like pancake serve. She has like one where pancake? she does this. Yeah. It's like she's making a pancake. <laughs> you know? And she like tries to do all that to throw you off. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like the ball is either jumping up or jumping down. Right. And so you can try to focus on those two main points so you don't confuse yourself. Mm. Right. So narrowing it down to like visual cues of like yeah, I was. We were actually talking about this yesterday. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough for a few minutes 
um, to play with Lu Guoliang, who still has old serves. Yeah. So, you know, he covers like this whole part. You can't see anything. And the ball just kind of like pops out from under his tricep. And I was like, I have no idea what's going on. I can't yeah. see the contact. I can't see anything. The only thing that I could try and do was like read the first bounce or like look at what happened after the ball kind of like bounced on my side of the table. Um, but yeah, if you can't read contact, there are other things that you can, can look yes, at. Yes, I, I think a lot try of people, to like simplify. Yeah, it. I think a lot of people don't pay attention to that because everyone's always like, watch the contact, watch the contact of the ball. But some people have such crazy serves, like you can watch the contact and still be like, I don't know what's going on, like yeah. at all. <laughs> um, but also one of the things that I always tried to tell people um, when I was coaching, a lot of people hesitate a lot, mm -hmm. like in the beginning. And if somebody's serving really well and you're losing a lot of points and you get like a little bit of doubt about what you're doing and you hesitate a little bit, if you're not decisive about returning serve, you're losing points and you're not gaining any information at all. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody serves topspin and you go in there and you kind of just like tap the ball and it goes out, you haven't learned anything. Mm -hmm. If you go in and you push it, if you're like, okay, I'm gonna try and keep this really short or I'm gonna push this out long and try and get it as deep as I can, at least when you push it, you're like, okay, now I know that's topspin. Mm -hmm. um, so I think like decisiveness is something that on serve return, a lot of people are like, they get thrown. I like, agree. They get totally thrown by. Yeah, I agree. I think anyways, if you can't tell a spin, if you try to be safe and it's going to pop up or come back with not so much quality, mm. your opponent's going to kill trouble, you. Yeah, so done. you might as well just go for it. And that's what I, tr I, I think I'm a player who tries to play more safe, but then I've realized like it's not actually helping me in the end. So nowadays I like try to tell myself, even at nine, I'm like, whatever, either way, like it's gonna be hard, so I might as well right. just try to go for it. Of course, easier said than done, because in those moments you're like, you just wanna play the ball on the table, mm. right? But like, I think if you really want to progress to the next level and compete with like the top, top players, you might you have to just kind of go for it. Mm. So it's like committing to your serve return. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah, sticking through it with it. Yeah. Um, I have a, uh, well, I'm going to ask another question first before we get, <laughs> before we get to the, the same, but, um, this is like, well, we kind of like talked some of it already, but what do you feel like the most important things to really pay attention for when you're returning serve? Like, what do you look for? Apart from that bounce that you talked mm. about, like, what would you initially look for when somebody's serving? I think initially, definitely their racket angle. Um, there's just some clear ways to tell, like if they're serving with the hook serve, yeah. you know it's gonna go a certain like, direction. direction, right? So have that first in your mind. Um, and then the contact point is also very important if you can see, like if- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if it's visible. <laughs> if it's visible, yes. Obviously I, I'd say re resort to that first. And then, if you can't see either, then I would say resort to looking at the bounce of the ball because that's where you can really tell. Right, what's happening. Yeah. There. Okay, so those are your top three. Yeah. <laughs> of um, course, I'm still learning. I mean, I don't think serve receive is. I, yeah, one and of my I guess like suits. the game changes a lot too. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the most part, the, there aren't too many like new serves coming out. I guess they're all like fairly stock standard, but again, there's like different players just have bizarrely different serve actions. And like, yeah, Mima Ito is probably one of the players that has so much going on yeah. <laughs> with like racket positions and stuff like that. And you look at like Ovcharov who has like the, the really low starting position on the backhand serve or like the high toss with the, the tomahawk. So I feel like people are always looking for other things like in the serve toss or like before they contact the ball to try and distract people in like the 95% of the whole serve action 
aside from the contact part. Yeah. Um, Contact's like a split second, right? Yeah. But like everything else is to kind of try to throw your opponent off. Mm. Like if they start backspin, they'll try to go up. So, yeah. so your opponent thinks that it's like backspin. Or sorry, topspin when it's actually backspin. See, so I'm already confusing myself. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I, have, I do have a fun segment because I like to throw one of these in, in every podcast. Um, it's called Serve or Receive. Um, I literally made it up this morning. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, so the idea is uh, you have to decide whether you would serve or receive. Receive is like, yes, something's good. Give me that. Okay. Serve is away from me. Like, serve it, get it away. Okay. Um, so I've compiled a, I wouldn't call them hot takes. Uh, some of them are like, I tried to be a little bit specific to you if I could, but some of the hot takes. The first one's pineapple on pizza because. That's a full serve. So you don't like pineapple on pizza? No, I hate that. Oh, yes. I know it's very divided, but. I hate pineapple. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Ban it. On anything. I can't stand pineapple at all. Um, all right. Oh, okay. That's quicker than I thought. I think that could go either way. All right. So that's a serve. No, no to pineapple on pizza. Yeah. Um, playing choppers. Sir, get that away from me as well. <laughs> I had to put that one in. Um, hot sauce on food. Receive. I love hot sauce. How, what kind I of, love... like, what gauge are we going to here? Are we, like, mild or, like, you're, are you a fanatic for, like, the really spicy No, stuff? no, no. I can't do, like, the hot wings type of stuff. That's oh, the hot too... ones, like, the, oh, last, sorry, the last dab. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. But I would say, like, sriracha is a, a mild, but, like, very tasty one that I like to put on a lot of What would you put food. it on? Literally anything. Anything? Yeah. Cereal? Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know, like breakfast, like you have it with an egg. Or... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That kind of breakfast. Um, this one I already know the answer to, but I put it in anyway. Because some people like milkshakes. <laughs> in theory, receive, but I'm lactose intolerant. So I have to say serve unless someone has a bathroom nearby <laughs> i are you are you the kind of person who's like would you would you like every now and then be like i want one and i'm having one because i don't yeah. i don't drink usually i don't drink milk at all but i love milkshakes yeah. and so every now and then i'm like i'm having one well i mean that's the same with me and boba or like milk tea like oh. i'm oh, yeah. not supposed to but it's worth the consequences for me. Not today though, because she knew she had a podcast. Yeah. So it was black tea today. I, have, I literally no, have one right there. There's was, was no milk before the podcast. It's like, excuse me, I, I gotta go. <laughs> um, treadmills. Look at the face. Uh, serve. <laughs> uh, Night clubbing. Maybe in college, receive. So no, nowadays. No, it's a no, we don't do that anymore. Yeah, no, it's a serve. Uh, I thought I'd float up an easy one at the end, nap time. Receive. That's a must. So every that day. evened out. I picked a lot that you were. You almost I'm very like, on everything. Yeah. Well. Ah, shoot. I thought the whole the focus of podcasts on receive, and I've ruined my <laughs> own segment. Everything is so. Everything so. Um, that was fun. I, I was I was interested to hear about the pineapple and pizza because I yeah. wasn't sure which. That's way the thing. Everyone's so divided. It's either love it or you hate it. That's it. I mean, it's easy for me because I, I, I cannot stand pineapple at all. I mean, on I love any, on pineapple, I don't. but I don't want it on cheese I found and out, sauce. I found out bread. the other day that when you eat pineapple, do you get like a like a burning, tingly yeah. sensation in your mouth? Yeah. I found out that it's because pineapple is like full of like microscopic needles. I saw, is that, did you see that from TikTok? Because I saw that I, I found a news art article and everyone in the office sure, gives me hell. news article. Everyone gives me hell for, uh, for not liking pineapple. And so yeah. I put the link to the news article in the, in the work chat as a defense. Anyway, um, moving back off pineapple and back to serve receive. Um, are there any specific table tennis players that you... Well, the first question is like, do you spend a lot of time watching other table tennis players to kind of look for ideas and, and look for inspiration? Or are you the kind of person who will watch table tennis players at an event? Or do you watch like video? Do you watch a lot of table tennis like outside of playing? And um, if you do, like who, who would you, who do you feel are like some good serve receivers that you kind of draw some ideas from? That's a good question. Um, I had to put one good question in. <laughs> <laughs> that's a hard one. I think I'm someone who 
normally watches during events. Uh, I, I definitely do watch outside, but I also try to have my own time away from table tennis right. instead of yeah. being instead just of like being glued to the screen only. Yeah. Um, and I, I do try to watch and learn other players, but I think to an extent where it's like, it's, it's great to learn from them, but sometimes if, if they're not, yeah, your style, like you yeah. can't do what they do, you know? Like I watch what, I love watching uh, Lin Ru receive cause he just mm -hmm. he could do flip that. kills. He could do that. I right? could, yeah, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> if I watch enough maybe. But obviously it's not something I can do. So, but I feel like, I feel like the Japanese players tend to have good serve receive mm. just because they seem to have a lot more like variation. A lot of them have, like Mima Ito for example, mm -hmm. Hayata, Hirano, everyone. Has yeah, like a yeah. strawberry. They like always try to change it up, and they're good in both like dropping short or flipping. Very like solid and, and balanced. And they're very like touch based. I always found Japanese players. Yeah, very touch based. Not like you know before like there was the era where it was like Mizutani and like Koki Niwa and stuff. Yeah, they weren't players that were gonna like hit like a screaming winner past you, but like very very good like feeling for the ball yeah they try to like look at the even adriana diaz i don't know if you've mm -hmm. watched her play as well she of course, yeah i mean i've played against <laughs> her so many times so i know what she tries to do but she's very actively looking at um her opponent to see where they're going and then makes a decision mm. based on that i actually um the person that i looked at the most for serve receive was kara kasovic oh yeah kara kasovic is like magic hands um, when I was in the Czech Republic and they were playing the league final there, um, I just watched him just demolish this, maybe an Italian player or something. Um, don't name him. <laughs> I don't know what his name was. Um, it was what, there was one particular game where he demolished him and like literally every single serve receive that he made during that one game was totally different. He would like step across and then like, like this way he'd step across and like kind of like float the ball down the line like this kind of I feel like a lot of players from that part of Europe do, do that kind of thing like Bojan Tokic and like Lubomir Pichte and stuff yeah. they do that kind of like float like push flick um just so many different receives it was crazy yeah but those are players with like really naturally talented touch feeling mm. whereas some players don't have that so or <laughs> Interesting how we're doing a, a <laughs> podcast on service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have good touch, actually. Yeah, uh, my serve receive is actually quite good in doubles, but in singles, not so much. I, I was always like struggled a lot with serve receive, which is like the, actually it was like the biggest difference for me because my service game was always like pretty reasonable compared to like other players my level. Mm -hmm. um, I actually just did a podcast with this. Recently with, I don't know if you know Craig Bryant. He's like a, a British, he doesn't really play that much anymore, but he's a British table tennis player. And like his serve game is like, compared to the rest of his game, it's like here. Mm. Um, so I was kind of similar to that. Like I do well off my serve, but then when I receive, it's like a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually, this kind of leads into the, the next part. Because I was going to ask if there are like, if there are specific ways that you will try and practice serve receive? I think the best way to practice is just to play a, like a bunch of different players. People? Like yeah. A, yeah. Because you, like you said, everyone has very, very different serves. Mm -hmm. And it's important when you do practice with them to like dedicate uh, a certain amount of time to, to just receiving. receiving. Even. Or even like when you play a drill, before I used to like to just like start from Thompson right. and just play like yeah, fast, 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 yeah. which I feel comfortable with. Um, but in a match, that's not how, obviously not how it goes. Yeah. So it's important to implement like maybe your opponent starts with serve, like a certain type of serve you want to work on, like topspin, side spin, mm -hmm. whatever. You start with flip or if they want like backspin, side, side, side spin, whatever. And then you start that and then you go into the rally. Mm. I actually, um, there was one match that I remember playing. It was quite a long time ago now, because, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a dinosaur. Um, but 
I played this this guy and it was ridiculously close. And I think the only reason that I came away with the match win was because at a really crucial moment, he kind of made a like a placement error with his serve. So there was like one serve that I managed to receive a lot better, but my serve receive against him was so bad. And uh, this was in New Zealand. Um, and so I was like, oh, I really need to work on my serve receive. So one, like almost every point off my serve lost almost every point off serve receive. Mm. And when I came back to the US, one of the things that I practiced for a little while was playing matches against people who were like a little bit lower than my level, um, who I would usually be pretty comfortable beating. Um, but I would make them serve for the whole match. Mm, um, so, you know, like usually I was comfortable against them because when I served, they would like make some terrible receive and then I would just, you know, put the ball through them. Yeah. Um, but once I took my serve out of the picture, I was like, this is actually significantly more difficult for me mm. because I'm taking my biggest advantage out of the match. Um, and I practiced that for a while. And, and actually when I went back and I played the same guy again, I just demolished him. Like it made a huge difference. Um, but that's something that I tried to practice. Yeah, I think more. that's a really great way to practice because like obviously when you start it's going to be hard but once you mm -hmm. can start to like work your way yeah into receiving better and getting the points and it like we said puts way less pressure on you yeah when you serve as well right yeah yeah exactly um yeah did you do you ever do you ever practice like multiple would like service multiple ever or is that not something that you would like your opponent basically the feeder is like only serving different you. serves yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's really important to do that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah. <laughs> yes to serve receive multiple. Um, okay, yeah, that was good. It was a nice, uh, nice quick little podcast on serve receive. Um, obviously, yeah, like you said, it's something that is kind of constantly evolving and there's lots of stuff to, the, uh, to learn. And I guess like the higher up you move uh, in tournament competition level, the tougher it gets. Harder it to, gets, yes. Um, but yeah, I think like your, the blog that you wrote about when you played Mima was like very insightful for that because you made it obvious from the beginning, like when in the beginning of the match, when she took like a, like a pretty quick lead, you were like, okay, this was like, you were uncomfortable because of serve receive. Like mm -hmm. you couldn't get into a rally. You basically get locked out. Mm -hmm. If somebody's serving well and then your receiving's not great, like you're not really feeling like you're a player that's like top 25 in the world anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're like, okay, maybe right now, if I can't get into a rally, you're doing a thing. Maybe I'm playing like 70 or 80, but then yeah, it's actually a really good blog that I will try and link somehow into this video. Check so it that, out. <laughs> yeah. So that people can read it because you go through that process of like the stuff that you looked for and stuff that you changed and yeah, and you even, did manage to like, even the other way around, where I started to adjust to hers, and mm -hmm. then I won the third game. And I she was also starting to have a bit more trouble with my serve because I figured out like a, a pretty good way mm -hmm. to kind of gain the advantage in the points. But then she was able to adjust. <laughs> she pulled a fast one. Yeah, <laughs> in the last <laughs> game. And so it's really just about like adjusting as well. Because table tennis, it's like such, it's like a game of chess, right? You're constantly trying to figure out. Right what what works and what doesn't and so yeah. like it was working for me but then because she was able to adjust then I wasn't sure how to change it up again where she would feel uncomfortable like she's very good at like a, just changing in those moments so that's for, for that's anybody for anybody five. who uh, yeah. finds himself up against me so yeah. just remember this part <laughs> um, okay perfect thanks Lily um that was great very insightful stuff into serve receive and we look forward to seeing seeing some uh some of that in action next time you play we'll try i'll try